we say a chorus. One clip could also be different, there could be different patterns. If it's audio and you've got a track, you know, if you edit up a track, one track, you know, one loop, could, one clip could be the verse part, one clip could be, say, the chorus part, one bit could be the breakdown, right? So the idea is you've got each clips, you've got clips and you can decide how you want to arrange them. Also, each clip will loop forever, you know, it'll just loop. So whereas with Logic or Cubase or Pro Tools, you have to think in this way, in a timeline, okay, because Ableton's got a timeline as well. In Ableton, you don't have to think about the timeline. So when you're making beats, you can just make stuff and think about the arrangement later. And why that's powerful is because, it, again, when you're, when you're working with Ableton, you, you work with Ableton in a different way to way, the way you would work with Logic because, like I said, everything's just clusters of sound, of beats, of sound, of noises, of bass lines, and melody ideas, and you can think about how you want to arrange it later. You don't have to think about it straight away, you know? Um, and that's really powerful, particularly when you get used to working with Ableton, okay? So, let me just take a seat here. So looking at this screen now, okay? It, you know, it may look a bit daunting, I know, but it's really quite straightforward, okay? So this area here is our session view, right? This is where we basically write our, write our ideas and put our ideas down. To the left is the browser menu, where we get our sounds. So at the top here, you've got, this is a window where you can collapse this window. Because again, what's good about Ableton is that, if you see, particularly if you've got a 13-inch backboard, you can collect, connect, collect, sorry, collapse sections to your, you know, to your heart's content. Next folder down is basically where we've got what's, what they call live devices, okay? Live instruments, basically. So you've got instruments, okay? You've got MIDI effects, which we'll go into a bit later, and you've got audio effects, just like plugins, all right? Next down, you've got access to your third-party plugins. So if you've got like Complete or you know Arturia things, they would be there. And then these three folders are basically like locations for your sounds, your samples, or your other projects or whatever. In nine, they rewrote this. They rewrote this, and it's actually a million times better in nine. Okay, um, and we'll look at nine at the beginning of next year. But for now, it's pretty much just, you know it's it's quite straightforward. All right. The bottom left hand corner is a little help window, so whenever you glide over a certain aspect of the screen, some information will come up here if you need it, okay? I usually hide it, but I'll keep it up for you guys. Um, at the bottom here, this is where we place our plugins and effects and chain them together. So whenever you do anything in, the, in this window, it will reflect this window. So if you create um, a clip and you start programming, this will become step edit, as we'll see in a second, all right? You've got effects returns here, which we'll go into in a minute. And you've got this master channel here, which we'll go on to in a, in a minute. Okay, you set your tempo here, uh, metronomes here. Most of the tracks we'll ever write you know, are going to be four four, so you don't really have to mess with this too much. Transport here, which we don't really use it in session view. We tend to use this in uh, a range view, and this is just some cycling for editing. You don't have to worry about that for the, for the minute. Okay, so I'm just going to start making a beat now. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, also say you've got mini chat mini channels and audio channels. I'm going to get rid of this audio channel for now and just have one MIDI channel. Okay? So with writing, same with logic, you can you can use step edit or you can use real time, right? I'm going to use step edit for now. I like using step edit because um, I'm, I'm a big fan of kind of programming, you know, and getting to, getting to understand the relationship between each sound and velocity and all this kind of stuff. So I'm a big fan of just double clicking and putting notes in myself. So I'm going to start with that. Okay? So, um, what what kind of tracks should I do? A fast thing or a slow thing? Slow. Slow? Okay, cool. So let's go to kind of direct tempo. Let's, uh, let's go for 90, 97. Let's go for 97 BPM. Okay, so BPM now. All right? So, I'm going to go to instruments, and I'm going to go to drum racks. So I go to the first tab there, right? That's instruments. The first selection is instruments. I um, select this little triangle here. And then I'm going to get drum rack. I'm going to select pull that down. I'm going to go to kit here, drag this down, and I'm going to call up the first one, which is a kit 808. Actually, this is modeled on the 808 drum machine. So I click and hold it once and drag it over this channel. Okay, let go, and it'll just load up. Alright? So this channel is now um, up. We've got some sounds to work with. So let me hear those sounds. So I've got, um, let me go here. 
So each one represents an instrument then? Each right. channel can, yeah. Each channel can, yes. Hold on a second. Hold on, no, 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 no. I'll show you that in a minute. One second. Right, okay, cool. Right, so I'm going to create one spare empty clip, okay, and then start programming. So the way I do that, I'll go to the first one, mm -hmm. double click, mm -hmm. it creates an empty clip. It's called, in the words, clip in Ableton speak. Mm -hmm. And we're going to program some drums into this, right? So with that selected, first of all, I'm going to name it. So you see here, I'm going to go to double click on the first this panel here. I'm just going to call this A for now. Keep it nice and simple. Keep it grey, but I can change the colour if I wanted. Okay. Now I'm going to start with the kick drum. So I'll go to this area here. I'm going to scroll down so that the kick drum is the last thing on the bottom. Okay. Now to hear audition the sound before I start programming, this um, icon needs to be lit up. So if it's blue, mm -hmm. I can then audition the sounds. And this is a preset sound. This is a preset drum kit that you... Well, use. I dragged in this 808. I dragged in on this channel. Yeah. And that makes those sounds available to me. Okay. All right? So, so let me start with the kick drum. Okay? You probably know this already. You know, does everyone know what the one is? Yeah. Who doesn't know what the one is? To start with. Okay, cool. So, this is how you find out what the one is. All right? So, that's the metronome. Right, so if I asked you where the one is when you listen to that metronome, where's the one? The beginning. Yeah. No, clap where the one is. Perfect, cool, okay. Why that's important is because every track you'll ever make, any collaboration you'll ever make, every mad vocalist you'll make that's gonna punch you because you don't like the chorus, um, every transition in the track happens on the one. Do you know what I mean? So you'll go one, two, three, four, the drop. Or one, two, yeah. three, four, okay. the chorus. Or one, you know, the breakdown, whatever. You just need to know where the one is. Mm. Why that's important is because it's the beginning of the, the beginning of the, the part, beat, right? Yeah. So if I press this, right, arm this clip by pressing play, you'll see that the the time now two, three, and one, two, yeah. Very, very important to know that one, right? Mm. So why that's important with a one bar pattern, which is what we've got, and I can tell the length here. See the length here? That's one bar. So with four four. Mm. With 16s, you've got 16 spaces there. Okay, so if I wanted to basically make a quick house towards the floor, I've got four on each of these beats. Yeah, so one there, one in the second beat, one in the third, one in the fourth. Right, instant four on the floor, right? Right, I'm just going to add a, a little kick in the end there. Right, so we've got four kick drums, quite nice. If I bring this window up now, this is the velocities. Uh -huh. Yeah, right? So if I want to just basically, and this is, you know, can add dynamics to the kick drum. So what I want to do, the last kick drum, I'm going to make it a bit quieter. This, so I get this handle, drag it down a little bit. Okay, so you'll hear it. Yeah, I'm make it more subtle. It makes it sound more realistic. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's quite nice, right? So let me um, then add another kick drum. So I've got, I can, to add another kick drum, I can double click where I want it, or select one of the ones already, press Alt on the keyboard, and it'll copy, allow me to copy, yeah? So what that was, select to note, hold on, Alt, drag. Yeah, so I'm just. Okay, cool, so the next thing I'm gonna do, so that's nice, I've got a kick drum, so I'm gonna bring this window down, okay? So I'm gonna make a copy of this, so I'm gonna start building building uh, drum parts. So select this clip, hold down Alt, drag down, okay? I've created a copy of it, right? Um, why? Okay, I'm gonna call this one B, it's different, okay. I'm gonna add some, I'm gonna add some, another, I'm gonna add say a clap to it, right? So I'll find where the clap is. Uh, actually, I'll add, I'll add a snare. Right, so I'll do a snare on the two. Okay. 
ankle like that. Okay, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to copy this. Alt, drag down. When you're copying it, it's just copying the instrument, not the... Not it's the copying the, the MIDI data, not the instrument. Okay, so remember, so all three of the them channel... Got the same MIDI data. Yeah. yeah, so imagine, in Logic, right, a channel is like an, uh, uh, an, a software instrument track enabled in Logic. So that could be an EXS. Yeah. So imagine drum rack being EXS. So what I'm doing is I'm basically um, is I'm all using the same instrument, but making different patterns with different note information. Right. Yeah. So, so you what I'm copying? You've got a kick going twice then for eight Well, eight. well, what is? That's a good question. So this clip here, the way the way um, um, Ableton works is top down. Right. So if I play A, right? Oh, why is it? Why is it doing? Right, so so if I play A, right, then I play B, it cuts off A. Yeah? Uh, right. The channel works top down. It's top down. Yeah? Okay. Right. Understand? Yeah. Yeah, cool. So so basically they you can only play one clip at a time on any channel. Oh, you can't. Oh, so you can't. You, you can't play the whole thing. No, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's yeah, interesting. Um, right. So, imagine each of these clips. Right. So that's I've got a kick in there. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm glad you lost this. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So, at the moment, each clip has got. So that's just a kick drum. Right. That's like kick and snare. Right. And that's obviously I'm going to put. I'm going to put a hi hat in this one. So, say for example, I wanted to play the more simultaneously. Say I wanted to play this. Oh, you know what? Let me just do it now. I'm going to get this pattern. I'm going to add a hi hat to this. So I'll find the hi hat, which is uh, that's that one. This one, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy. I'm going to go Alt, copy that, copy that, copy that. Select them, copy that. Select them, copy that. There's a shortcut as well. I can, but I want to. I'm teaching it. It's visual. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's, it's just when you're teaching it, it's easy to show people. Oh. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, they're way too loud for me. So, I'm going to select them all. And the way to select them all is to select on this, on the row, mm -hmm. select the notes, right? And then select any one, drag down. Okay, cool. So. Yo, this looks worlds away from reason. Yeah. Right, so just to be clear, so I've got this track, this clip, sorry, clip. That's just a kick drum. And the second one's clap. It's there, sorry. And then the third one, clap, yeah? We'll call this one C. Okay, so. So in a song, right? In a song, this could be, that could be the intro, that could be the verse. And that could be the chorus. Okay, just for example. Okay. Now, to answer your question, Ash, um, say for example, I wanted to have this pattern here, mm -hmm. but I wanted to just mute the kick drum for a while. Yeah. Okay. So one way of doing it would be to copy this pattern and take the kick out. Right. Yeah. Another thing you could do is this little triangle here opens up the mixer for this um, drum <laughs> track. Right? right. So I can play them all. So I wanted to mute the drum. Just and that's, that's the mixer for C. That's O. Okay, no. That's the mixer. Oh, okay. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> Think of the grey clips yeah. as um, um, region, um, regions or parts in, a, in logic. Right. Okay. So in logic, right, when you make it, you double click, you make it a software instrument, you choose right. an instrument, whether it's battery or EXS, yeah. that when you record into that part, that part is one of those. Right. All yeah. in that part is just MIDI information. What notes you're playing, there's no audio or anything. The channel is the track. Right, yeah, so where's Logic goes that way? Yes, goes exactly, that way. yeah. But in Ableton, Ableton can also go that way. Yeah. Yeah, but rather than instruments be on this side, like in Logic, yeah, yeah, Ableton's on, on this side. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so the thing is, with this, um, and I'm again I'm glad, glad you answered this, in Ableton, you can of course write in this way, like a Logic way, but it almost like there's no point. Yeah. Because the beauty and advantage to Ableton is working this way, 
right? Workflow. And you don't have, yeah, you don't have to think about the, the arrangement, like where the verse is, where the breakdown is. You just have clips of ideas. You can deal with the arrangement later. You know? So, oh, so. Yeah. Okay. And also, when you start, so to me, what's good about Ableton is that you can think about the composition, like writing music mm -hmm. and production at the same time. That so you think of writing and in the production, like using delays and effects, you can, that would inform how you write, do you know what I mean? You can do okay. both together, it's brilliant. I'll, I'll go on to explain. Really, it was just on that, okay, it really does depend how you work. Because uh, yeah. your work flow. Yeah. Because I find it harder to work in this one. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Not because it's not, I'm saying this, the workflow in this is much more <coughs> rapid and there's yeah. more ideas that come to you and whatever. But when you're making very complex, detailed songs, when you've got loads of buttons everywhere, like, I'll yeah, find it I mean, it's all, yeah, it's yeah. all, it's all good. It you know, it's all good. I mean, I think, of course, when you could, I mean, you, you know, <coughs> these clips could be complicated. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, mm. I think the good thing about, you know, I mean, it's all, it's all good. It, it doesn't, there's no yeah, right, there's no right or wrong. There's no right. Yeah. Is there no? Yes. You did chuck down a whole track. In yeah. A space well, like yeah, that. Exactly. Ideas, yeah. Okay, well, exa exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Well, when I get to audio in a second, you'll see like this piece is piece. It, working with audio in Ableton, piece, it's a, it's easier. <laughs> it's just much more straightforward, much more creative, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so we've got a couple of, you know, three beats there. Yeah. Just to keep going. So say as if I wanted to arrange the track while I had the idea, how would I do that? I will tell you that in a second. Okay. I just want to wipe, oh, why this is not playing? Oh, so. that's it, yeah, I'm really fair. Thank you, actually. Gold star, mate. Right, cool. Okay, so what's good about that is that, you know, you could, you know, if I wanted to mix the, sa the sounds in the video, I could do it here if I wanted, right? So that's just to show you that. So drum rack in Ableton is a really powerful instrument, you know? <coughs> It's really cool, you know, you can put your own sounds into it. Whoopsie. I'll do that. You know, you can, each of these cells, um, I'll, I'll show you in a second, but you can put your own samples, you can tune them, you can loop them, you can put envelopes on filters, you can do loads of stuff, it's, it's really, really cool. Okay, right, so I've got some drums. Yeah, I've got the kick drum, I've got this. Okay, and then I've got that. Okay, so, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I want to control those, you know, I'll, I'll just, I just, I want to control them, right? So all those hit key, click on the first one, I'm going to assign letter Q to that, W to that, E to that, okay? So now I can control this from my keyboard, right? So I press Q on my keyboard, right, computer keyboard, that and triggers that, that one, one, yeah? One, two, then W, yeah? And then one, two, three, E, I see, yeah? Going back to the A. Yeah, then E again. Can you yeah. do that with the buttons on the keyboard? You can do it on anything. Can you? Yeah, yeah. can you do anything. Can you show that again? Yes, yes I can. Yes. Right, so, three clips, right? So, again, the brilliant back thing about Ableton, I've got three clips, uh, you know, one could be the verse, one could be the bridge, whatever, I don't know yet, right? Yeah. But I just want to try stuff out. So, yeah. hit key, yeah? Click, click on the first clip that you want to program and then press your computer keyboard to, to assign any key to it. Try and keep it to key to you know to letters, not modifiers, it's just easier. Right? Yes. And then once you've done that, take off key again. And the thing you have to remember, this icon here, this piano icon, turn it off, right? Why you have to turn it off is because with Ableton, when that's on, you can use your computer keyboard like a piano. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's brilliant. So say so for example now I can basically program if I just press uh, So I'm using my computer keyboard to program. Audition, right? Again, it's really cool. So turn that off, and it just means that you can use the uh, keys for. Yeah? Okay? Does it come in on the bar? Good question. Yes, it does, right? So, again, the wicked thing about Ableton is that um, when you set it up, it will bring each clip in on the one. Yeah. Right? Because the quantize of this screen is one bar, which is set here. <laughs> yeah? So the good thing is, I don't have to, but no, my timing can be relatively good. One, two, three, and, right? If I press it, if I press the key, the key on, say, the second or third beat before I want it to come in, it's all good, right? So if I'm working with an MC now or a vocalist, right, I don't have to think about the arrangement. As a, as a programmer, yeah. right, if this was logical, if this was logical Cubase, You'll be looping the section, do you know what I mean? Yeah, or, you know, yeah. mm. but with this, you don't have to think about it. You can just basically just play it, you know, and just get some ideas, just 
Okay, when you're ready, right? So I'm ready. You ready? You ready? Yeah, you've got to say to them, you know, one, two, three, and drop. Yeah? Back to breakdown, breakdown, breakdown. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to think about the arrangement. Uh, and when you're, again, when you're working with vocalists or when, when you're just trying an idea, as a producer, you don't have to say to them, like, okay, the verse has to be 16 bars. You know what I mean? Or the chorus has to be 32 bars. You know, you're going to ruin my arrangement. Yeah. Just let them do their thing. Just record. Record for hours. Yeah. Hours. It's just there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you could decide what you want to use. Do you know what I mean? And make clips out of it. It's a different way of working. It's brilliant. It's, it's, like, it's so much more free and flexible. Okay? So, um, so I've got those assigned. Okay? I want to show you a couple of other things. Um, so let me just double check this. Double check. Okay, cool. So, in 8, um, in, in 8 and 9, this is kind of the default setup. Difference is in nine, these channels have got a reverb on it and a delay. Okay, I'll show you what those are in a minute. So um, if I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna load these channels, these are return channels they're called, right? I'm gonna put one of them, I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna go to audio effects, and I'm gonna put in the A, I'm gonna put a reverb. So I'm gonna reverb here, drag this across here. Okay, and then in B, I'm going to put what's known as a ping pong delay, like a really cool delay in Ableton. Put that in B. Okay? Right, so this reverb and this delay are access, can be accessed across any of the channels that we put in via what these sends here. Okay? Uh -huh. That's send A, that goes to the reverb. That's send B, that goes to the delay, right? So you so, can only put two? No, you put six. Okay. So, the, so uh, more will add onto the channel. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is reverb, yeah. Yeah, and then delay. That's ping pong. So ping pong, what ping pong though, it goes from left to right. Okay. Uh -huh. And this particular ping pong is really cool because it's basically frequency dependent. So the return can be just high frequencies. Yeah, and I can swing it across. It's low frequency. Timing. Oh, so you can set when you want it to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I'm not really a fan of logic. For whatever reason. Yeah. If you can, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, so it's just free. Just the kick. Because you, you're, you're applying that send to, to the whole thing. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm glad you mentioned that. So Orange. if I wanted to uh, apply the send just Orange to the kick, yeah. then I'd have to program this slightly differently, right? So what I'd have to do is here, you see here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you can turn the send down on yes. each individual. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what you can do is you can control it from here, right? Right. So all these channels are all the sounds that are in the eight. It's like having a mixer, separate outputs for each of the sounds. Okay. okay. And you can mute them, pan them, whatever you want to do for each of the sounds, right? That's using drum rack. Okay, so the reason I'm showing you that is because what we can do is, um, if I just double check that this is all covered already, can you one um, second? I was talking about the logo. Right, so another thing I can do is I can assign any of these, oh, I've already done it for this. Uh, we go to here. Now I can assign any of the knobs on this keyboard here on, a, on my MIDI keyboard now, mm -hmm. right? To control it. So here I'm gonna assign this key and then this key, right? So now two faders on. Let me just check something. Sometimes it's a bit annoying. So two faders on the keyboard control the reverb and the delay. How right? do you do that? Sorry, Simon. So what you do, you go MIDI. Okay. You click on the parameter that you want to control, yeah. and then click um, turn the assignment you know, relative. Oh, you just turn, you turn, turn it, it and it will capture it. Yeah. Okay. And you'll see it here. It says it here. Right. Okay. okay. Um, before you do that, you just need to double check. Enable it. It should be fine because we've learned it here before. Preferences in MIDI sync. Make sure control service says elevation impulse. Yeah. Elevation impulse, elevation motion, and this is on, 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 on. Then, then you'll be fine. That's not. If it's not working, that's the reason why you've got to set it up. Okay. But you can go through that. 
So the cool thing is, you can basically assign stuff straight away, right? So, so now I can control the delay from here, the reverb from here. Yeah? And likewise, if I go to ping pong and go to MIDI, I can then maybe assign um, some of the other um, faders and knobs to this, right? So I can, I can change the delay in real time. So if you look here, hold on, let's just change it. Yeah, so that's changing the filter. I can see why they have the APC with this machine, with this yeah. program. So I can change the... The buttons are a bit fiddly on this uh, on this innovation for some reason. They're not really they're not nice for this. But but the idea is you can you know if this was like a you know, an APC or a launch pad or whatever, you know you could basically assign if you've got any keyboards with MIDI controllers, yeah. com complete control complete keyboards for example. Yeah. Bar the proprietary complete browser thing, you could do the same thing. Yeah. Right. It's wicked. So again, what's really good about this is that you can start again bringing production ideas into your composition. Do you know what I mean? Because you've got access, you know, you know, like fader one is the reverb, and then fader two is the delay. You can just start getting some ideas for what effects using that in the mix as part of the composition. Do you know what I mean? Right. Let's say you've got, you're going from the verse to the chorus, maybe do like a dub send, yeah, and then a sweep, and then breakdown. Do you know what I mean? So you can build that in, right? So in eight, um, that kind of stuff, like if you wanted to um, write automation in, you have to do it in a range mode. But in nine, you can any clip you can you can write automation to a clip. Right. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. say for example, yeah. so for clip so A, for example, would have no reverb, for example, say those settings. But in B, for example, you can make it so that it will ride, you can ride the you know anything in and out. You can build automation to a clip, which is so amazing. Also in eight, it's proposed. You know, it's so not yeah, it, yeah. So any kind of automation you have to do it in, in a different mode, in a range mode. Whereas in nine you could write automation to a clip. Yeah, I understand that. I know, I know about nine, but I don't know about it. Yeah, so no, that's a, that was one of the big things in, in nine. Yeah, it's brilliant. So it just means that when you're writing, it's almost like a clip can do so much. Do you know what I mean? It can, you know, it can do so much with just one clip. And again, when it comes to playing live, that's kind of what you want sometimes. You want to be able to, you know, focus more on playing rather than thinking about, oh, on that track, that delay, that time, you know. Yeah. Anyway, cool. All right, so. That's happy with that. So next thing I want to show you is um, working with audio. Okay. So um, I've got folder called samples here. I've got a few things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this beat in here. Okay. And to work with us, drop drag it into this arrange into session view. Okay. Ableton creates a, a new track. Okay. I'll double click on the clip. Okay. And this is basically the beat. Okay. I've specifically chosen a beat that's quite straightforward, okay? Um, just for, for, yeah, as a, for the first beat. So you can see here, the first thing to notice is that Ableton has this technology called Warp, right? Warp was the first, um, Ableton was the first door to have um, manipulating audio as part of the as part of the door, you know? Ableton has been around since 2001, it was the first to have this. And what warping is, is the opportunity, Ableton scans the loop and works out where the transients are, okay? So you can see here, with warp on, you can see it's got them pretty much on lockdown, right? And why that's cool is because I haven't had to think about what tempo this loop is, okay? You see here, it says segment BPM. The actual loop is 90 BPM, but our track is 97. So if I press play now, yeah, I'll, just, I'll just mute mine, this is the beat, right? So the good thing about that is that in Ableton, if I wanted to change the tempo of this track, for example, I wanted to make it like 88, just take it down. Right, it's a oh, okay. real time. I don't have to think about it. The time stretches it in real time. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Like you have to do it that manually. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and also this is audio, this is audio, so it's 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 it's, it's basically flexing the audio, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really, really cool, that is. Right? So we can take it back to 97. Okay, so you can see here this beat is two bars long, right? You see the length is two bars. So I'm just going to copy 
this one, and I go to Alt, drag down. Okay. So now let me just let me just do some things to this. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one beat, and what I did was just take the length down. So now this clip is just that. Yeah. And I wanted to go back to that one. Say I want to find other sections. So what I do is I click on this band here and I can move it while Ableton's playing, I can find other sections that I like. Right? So just go yeah, or that. transient markers okay so when you when you import a piece of audio into Ableton it tries to read it and work out where the transients are yeah nine times out of ten if it's an electronic key right it will get the most of the time it has difficulty with older records particularly if the you know if it's an old disco record that was recorded on you know recorded on tape is a little bit you know harder but for anything that's kind of definitive beats you know techno minimal house whatever it works out pretty well okay and why this is good is because you can basically move transients around, right? So at the moment, this this beat is just like boom, 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 yeah. But what I can do is I can just click on this one, bring it forward, yeah. And now, yeah. So that's audio, right? That's not MIDI, yeah. Or well, can double click to add, add another marker. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the yellow ones are like locked. Yeah. Okay. So the if I take the yellow off, then it basically it's fle flexible. Okay. So what you can do is you can basically move, you can regroove audio, right? So in a live concert, say like this was a live drummer, and you could decide whether you want to keep the feel of the drummer, or you can decide, okay, maybe the kick and snare I'll put on the beat, but all the stuff in between I'll keep. You know what yeah. I mean? We'll go into that in a second. So why this is good is because basically when you import audio into Ableton, not only does it try to, it tries to work out what the tempo is, it will fit, it will try and fit in yeah, your clip into, sorry, who said easier? Oh, you're talking? No, it's talking about the Oh, okay, cool. No. Okay. Right, so, so that's really cool, right? So you can basically put a beat in, you can basically find sections that you want to, want to use, and you can almost like splice it up. So you could like just chuck like four, four beat and everything on the fly. Yes, totally, right? And a good, let me show you a good example of that. So with this, say for example this beat I've got here, right, I could reverse it very simply. Yeah, just hit reverse here. Yeah, of course I change the pitch. So again, when you're writing, you don't have to stop. Just put something in, try it, try that bit, make it what okay, is it what two bars, four bars, one beat. It's all like intuitive, it's fast, it's really so you can be inspired by what you're doing, right? So like that, I'm gonna keep that. Did you save all these tutorial things that work? <laughs> I don't you know, I should tonight. No, you saved this one, man. Yeah, okay, cool. Alright, I'll close there anyway. Yeah. So again, these the effects are very good. Right? 
Okay, cool. So we like that. So next thing I want to show you is some speech. So I'll go to the speech here. I'll just play it from here. Will it play? It won't. Okay, fine, no worries. I'll drop this, drop this across. And you can dra drag MP3s into... No, not MP3s. It has to be words. Swear word, man. Swear word. <laughs> web saves, web saves. <laughs> Right, so we will not be held responsible for any hearing impairments or the excessive exposure to this sound. Yeah, again, okay, so it loops it in time. We will not be held responsible for yeah. any hearing impairments or damage. Or okay, cool. So let me show you a few things. So this speech, speech is equally as cool because, again, you know, if it's a speech that you get off the internet or something, like I've got this from freesound.org, okay. Most of the time when people drop things in, you know, people are quite sensible about having space. To be, you know, people want the recording to, to work in the context of a track, you know, two bar, four bars, whatever, right? So I just dropped this in. I didn't even know what it was, but I knew it would work. It's just fine. It's four bars long. You know, it's cool, right? I can change a um, couple of things I have to think about in Ableton. When it time stretches, when it warps, it's got different engines, right? So most of the time, you can use this one called beats, which is like drums, bass, you know, sorry, drums, percussive ones. But if it's vocal, anything vocal, or anything that's like human voice, you've got to use complex, right? Because it doesn't, again, it's more, it's a bit more uh, intense, a bit more, I guess, uh, 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 it's a much deeper algorithm, okay? So if I, I'll show you what I mean. If I press that so solo, you can almost. You will not be held responsible. You can almost hear like a, a, a kind of a little kind of a well, stretch. Yeah, we're stretching, we're stretching, right? We will not be held responsible. Yeah, you can hear. Well, use Complex Pro. We will not be held responsible for any hearing impairments or damage caused to you. Now I'll put I'll put that back in. Hold on. The beats. And what I'll do is I'll take this down quite a lot. Mm. We will not be held responsible. Yeah, right, so it's kind of sounding glitchy. We will not be held responsible for any hearing impairments. Okay, let's well, use Complex Pro. Should be better. We will not be held responsible for any hearing impairments or damage caused to you from excessive exposure to this sound. Cool. Okay, so complex phrase is the way to go for vocals or speech. Okay, I'll bring this back up to 97. Okay, so same kind of thing with this, right? So what I can do is I'll keep the master, so I like that. I'll go Alt, press play, and I'll just find sections to use in a similar way I did before. Right, just. Uh, Find a word. We will not, 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 we we held responsible, we held responsible, we held responsible, we held responsible. So again, I can go from that to here. We will not, we will not, we will not, we will not, we held responsible, we held responsible, we will not, we will not, we will not, we will not, we held responsible, we held responsible. Yeah, it's cool, man. It was cool. So again, I quite like that. I'll use it, I don't know, would I use it or not? You know, it's just an idea, right? You guys have Christmas number one. Exactly, it's like a Westfield joke. <laughs> right? So, why not actually with the Black Friday act? Uh, <laughs> exactly. Isn't that madness? The whole Black Friday thing? That's yeah. crazy. What is Black like Friday? Punching each other up. Uh, it's yeah. Basically, yeah, it's, a, it's basically a discount. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an American tradition where um, the Friday before Thanksgiving, the weekend before Thanksgiving, there's like discounts. Like having the January, our January sale. It's like January sales. So, why are we guessed about it this year? Though? Because we've started to copy it. Uh, yeah, uh, and it's all people, you know, companies advertise way in advance, and know, man. it's all craziness at Adjuvant. Well, yeah, 40 inch, you know, 40 inch TV, plasma TV, or LCD TV for 140 quid. People are going to be fighting for that, stuff <laughs> each other to get that. <laughs> Lay in Asda, it's going to be crazy. Anyway, right, so, while that's cool, right, I'll show you another instrument in Ableton. So, with, 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 
with um, I should do that with speech because again with speech you can basically find sections, you can use clips that you know elements that you want. So this could be let's say your vocalist or your MC, you find clips that you want to use, and if you want to kind of deconstruct their performance, you can do that. Do you know what I mean? Or try different things out. And you know you can pitch each one differently, you can reverse them, you can just do loads of stuff, you know? Um, but what I particularly like, right, is uh, this instrument in Ableton called um, Simpler. And what Simpler is, it's like a simple sampler, right? I just dragged it across. And basically you drop any, you drop any sample in there and you can play it on your keyboard. So an audio channel, Does okay. Does it sub it up for you anyway? Hold on one second. So these are all clips, as I showed you before, right? So that's a clip of that, that's the one word, that's the one word, and that's the whole thing, right? So what I can do is, but these are audio clips, so the only way to play them and process them is to physically go into the clip and, mod and change it, right? But what I can do is simpler, any of these clips, I just drag into this area here, and now I can play on the keyboard. Yeah, so now I can use it as a sample. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why that's amazing, I, I rinse it to shreds, is if I've got a vocalist, if I like, if there's a tone I like, if I, let me just do that. Yeah. Uh, let me find a, I haven't really got a sample in it. Uh, sample there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh yeah, it's in this uh, week one. Okay, so if I go here, the left and right. Yeah. Oh, is it? Um, okay, forget that. Forget that. Um, what basically what it is, if you've got a vocal, like a, a tone, like, ah, you can basically play it like this and use the, your vocalist voice as an instrument in yeah. the track. You know? So again, it's just very, very, very powerful. You know? And with this, you can basically go in and you can find, you know, find bits that you want. Same, same kind of way. You know, loop sections, you can just go to town and really, you know, really kind of like. like you were talking about. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's great. So, so again, it's that thing where you can just just make madness from, you know, and because this is Ableton, you can, you know, you can mod, you can basically control all these. So I could assign say a, a fade, you know, a, a, a knob to this, a knob to that. So I could change, I could do like I do things quite a lot where I'll assign the start time and the loop time on the keyboard. So every time I play the sample, it's moving around in time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It could be part of the verse, it could be part of the chorus, it could be, it could be whatever, you know. Brilliant. It's really, really powerful. It's, it's, just, it's called Simpler. Simple, but it's really, 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 really powerful. Okay? Right. So, any questions so far? Yeah, is there, because I know on the, on the sample you've got like a reverse function on it, but you don't, do you have a reverse? Because uh, I was looking, but I don't seem to be able to find it. <laughs> no. No, I think there is, yeah. Right. So, and the see the then another thing is the pitch. But that's okay though. I mean well, you can just take just, the audio just, just reverse it. Go in, yeah, just right. reverse the audio and yeah. just drop it in. Yeah. And it's for live purposes. Because like I wanted to play it forward <clears throat> and then control it so it goes back in reverse. But what you can do, I mean you can loop it, you know you've got the loop here. Um the loop, I'd love to loop. Loop you can change the direction, you know. I'm pretty sure it's in the sample. You can yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, obviously the samplers, I mean, what um, <coughs> what we're talking about here is samplers is deliberately simple, 
you know what I mean? Simpler, sorry. Yeah. Sampler's a lot more involved, you know? Yeah. And that's for a reason, you know? The whole point of simpler, I mean, the fact that you've got, you know, you've got a filter on this, do you know what I mean? You've got, you can, you know, you can modulate this out. I mean, it's, it's very powerful for what it is. It's a bit like in, in um, Ableton 8, you've got Impulse, yeah, which yeah. is a simple drum player. Yeah, and you've got drum. And then you've got drum rack, yeah, which yeah. is a lot more complicated. Do you know what I mean? So it's a similar kind of thinking, you know? Uh -huh. It's just because obviously, like for the live part of things, which is what you're trying to show. Sure. Yeah. But to take a um, sample and reverse it on the flow, or take off, 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 yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, you just use, no, 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 you do it this way. So you, you just use your clip. You see, yeah, use fire. a clip, drop a clip into, yeah. reverse the clip, drop the clip into simpler. Yeah, but see, um, how, do you, how do you do it real time rather than having to wait every four? Like, how, still, so yeah. you can kind of just. You know, they do it on the flight. So, so say for example, you want you wanted a, <coughs> you want to be able to you want to have a sample that plays forwards and backwards. Yeah, so it's easy you used to play hello. And yeah, then and then we'll go. Yeah, yeah, but you want yeah. it to be like cool. You, so then you know, the way I would do it is I would use a yeah I'd use a sampler. Yeah, sampler. Because this can only play one. It's simply going to be one sample at a time. Yeah. And have the two samples and velocity switch them. Or just assign them to different. Keys. Yeah, different keys or velocity yeah. switch them. Yeah. I mean that's one way of doing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Wicked. All right, so let me just take, so we've got that. Oh, right. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually take the tune itself, right? Is that, all, is that okay so far? Yeah. Yeah? yeah Wicked. All right, so um, I'm going to go here. Right, so I'm going to go here. Let me just find my samples. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to basically bring up. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, let's do this one. Um, I've got a, uh, yeah, let's just go straight to the drum here. Right, so I've got this tune here, I'm struggling, they're, they're going straight in. Um, and to answer your question, yes, you can put every freeze into um, Ableton, but you know I'm not a big fan of it. Uh -huh. Everyone's sure going to be Yeah. <laughs> right. So this I'm going to solo this track. So this is the track I've just put into Ableton. Right. So I'm just going to. Um... Right. That's the reason why I don't like using this one. Wow. Anyway, let's put this to Complex Pro. Okay. Right. So what Ableton's trying to do is basically, obviously. Um, you know, this track is originally 117 BPM and it's time shut it down, right? Which is cool. But the problem with using, when you import a track into Ableton, mm. particularly if it's an old track, if I zoom in, right? If I just, all I'm doing is to zoom in, um, if you look at my mouse, in this area, the cursor changes to a magnifying glass. So I mm. click, drag down, and drag to the right. Drag down something. That's what I'm doing. Okay, let me just go zoom in. Zoom in again. I'm going to go over here. Okay, so if you look over here, Ableton hasn't worked out where the one is. Right, cool. So you see here, it's got the first um, walk marker at some snap. Just ignore these ones and put beginning there, it's like, it's wrong. Mate, Ableton, what are you talking about? You're wrong, mate. <laughs> so you need to tell Ableton what's going on. You need to give them some groove, right? It's a bit Berlin right about now, right? So what you're going to do, take warp off, okay? And then you listen to, you listen to the track. Bring the, this, is the, this, this is the start flag. So I'm going to bring it right to the beginning for a minute. Hit play. Right, so I want it to start there, right? If this is like a fill. I don't, I'm not really interested in the fill at the moment. So I get this flag, bring it to the beginning, right? Zoom in, beginning, okay? And then what I do is I right click on this flag and say to Ableton, set bar one here, bang, right? So then what it should have done is it then re-warps it and tries to work out what the groove is, okay? So you see here it's pretty, it's got, it's quite good. Let me just take these off. Because when you take the markers off, it changes the yeah yeah change yeah we can we can get we can get there right so <laughs> what you should try and well what, what you should I mean there's there's different approaches to this right so with warping it 
For me, first of all, it depends on what, what it's warping, right? The way it would warp a, a disco record is different to the way it would warp, say, a record by those groups. It's, it's, well, it's about transients, it's about transients, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And groove, right? So, a lot of people, like, if you, you know, if you go to you know, so some people say, you know, these yellow ones, the locked ones, you only need one at the beginning, at the end, and, and, and actually, like, most of the track should be just the transient markers. It depends, you know, ultimately it doesn't, it's not you really, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, um... So this, this is about finding the right sample, to be honest, like, especially with, like, hip-hop and sample. Sample? I mean, when you say sample, I mean, I mean um, it depends, because, it, you know, it depends on your approach, because, obviously, if a sample jumps out at you, of course it does. If that works, use it. I mean, but then there's another approach, which is like you're gonna make something work. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Jamie. Yeah, you know I mean? it, it can be a bit tricky sometimes. So, like for hip hop, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you have your drums. Yeah. Um, but you you've got your drums and you're set on your drums, and then you want to find a sample that goes with your drums. But this, I would argue. Uh, yeah, but I would argue it depends on you know how it, it even depends how you sample in 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 in, in hip hop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because like, I would argue that, okay, let's look at it another way. Oh. You're not re edit, you're not re edit house, right? You know, where people get disco records and re edit. Mm. Ableton, you cannot use anything else. It's so, it's like. Mm. It's just once you've got a, a, once you've got the transient marker sorted, it's a pleasure finding chunks. Yeah, yeah. And then once you, then you would layer the drums, you know, get them to, you know, do you want it to sound, the drums sound electronic or do you want it to sound the sensitive to the era of the break. And then you can just, just go to town, you know? And again with this, is you can decide, like if you have a look here, um, let me just play this section. I'm gonna just play one bar of it. I'll just go here, go to bar one. Yeah, 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 Okay, it's not it's not exactly one, but see here, it's, it's got a slight lock in. I'm gonna have to deal with that. So I play this. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of work. I mean, you want, I'm gonna take, turn this up. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, right? Because it's gonna see what I'm doing. Okay, so if you see here, right, that kick should it, this walk marker needs to be, you know, that kick needs to be further back. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of things here. I look at these transient markers. That one's pretty okay. In fact, let me just do this. I'm going to move this one forward. Yeah. That, that looks okay. That looks okay. That looks okay. That looks okay. This one is definitely late. Early. See that? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move this one back. So you need to move the other ones back, yeah? Well, that's a good question. Right, so I'll undo. See here, this is okay. You just so set I'm a walk them up. Yeah, I'm going to lock it. Lock it. There, so I lock yeah. that one. Yeah, lock that one. So I've locked that. So any ch any um, movement of the walk markers, these will move, that won't move. Right? So watch. See that? So it's a combination of using the lock locked ones and the movable ones. Right? So here, see, so it's getting better now. Getting better now. So here I'll move this. That looks okay, I think. That could move there. That could move there. Cool. So now the kick is pretty much... I've, I've basically stretched, pushed and pulled it to get it in, in, in time. So let's have a look. I could even be more anal and just go, okay, you know what? Let me just move like this. Okay, so what I did was, see any, any of these walk markers, you can move them around, right? If I hold down shift, I can move it anywhere along the track, anywhere along the plane. Right, so it's not locked where, where Ableton says it should be. You can actually tell Ableton, ah, no, mate, you're not, you're wrong. So it's not there. It's wherever you want it. Right? Cool. So now that should be. Cool. Okay. Cool. So then the next one, I'll find the next. So I'll copy that. Copy this. Okay. Then I'll move this along. And now listen to that. Oops, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Cool. 
it's the same thing, right? So with this, I'm going to do a little bit of a little, little bit of homework. Just move this here. That's okay. That's okay. Move this one here. Okay. Move this one here. Okay. Move these. Move that one there. Sure. Okay. So you can see I'm basically having to basically move, you know, change the order timing in order to get it to the time. Okay, again with this one, I need to press shift to move this back. Move that. Cool. So I like those two. So because I know this tune, um, I'm going to skip way into the track itself. Okay, I'm going to find some other. Still hasn't yet. This isn't right, so I'm going to take this off. Uh, look at this move here. That's okay. That could move. Oh, sorry. Lock this one in place. Lock that one in place. That's cool. Move that. Right, this needs to move for sure. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm doing is basically, yeah, just basically just make it. Okay, cool. All right, so that's essentially how you have to work with old, you know, old disco records. You, know, you have to spend a little bit of time going through it all. You know, basically getting the groove to work, you know, get it to work. But the good thing is, once you've done it, you know, you can just work, you've got seconds to work. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll go here, get this conga. Excuse me. Right, so I've got that. Okay, so I need it. So, for example, right, okay, so another thing I want to do is just, if I wanted to use this in some kind of, in that kind of disco context, or some kind of house context, I just basically go to audio effects, and there's an effect called auto filter, which is a classic kind of filter, you know, um, and you can basically open and close the filter in real time. So if I play it. Yeah. 
It's extremely flexible in a way that's, you know, I mean, you can do a similar thing in, in Logic with flex time now, but there's something about, there's something about not having to pin yourself down to the timeline that's really powerful in Ableton, you know? Yeah, the good thing is that it obviously tempo matches it, and yeah. you work from there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it does all the great stuff for you. Yeah, yeah. And, you yeah. yeah. and also you're not tied to, like, you know, like, you know, you know it's 140 BPM now, but if I, you know, obviously took this down to the tempo we had before. Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> All the, all, the, all the effects are also taken down, so I think they can be in time. And I've got a vibe going, you know, I don't have to think about, in fact, I can just think about what I need. Do you know what I mean? So if this was supposed to be like a, you know, like a disco re thing, and I've got the filter going on, okay, I know, I, just by using the filter, that's, people will like that. So what would take it to the next level? Is it a drum thing, is it a switch up, whatever, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? The lights, the lights. Yeah, the lights, that's amazing. amazing. So that could be, you know, that could, so obviously bar, you know, thinking about things like compression, you know, some, some production things, yeah. you know, that, that could be a really that could play out. Huh? The workflow is, is, is cute. Right. The paper, it's quite similar to, like, if you use a machine standard. Like yes, be, yes. Because that's yeah. just clip launching as well, yes. isn't it? Yeah, same vibe, same kind of vibe. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because yeah, what I do, I, I uh, all my yeah, drum beats, I, I put yeah, through the machine. Like, yeah. Always do, you machine. Drag and, do you drag and drop? Drag it, do you drag it? No, well, what, no I, I play all the drums. Yeah. And then just quantize, use the 50% quantizer, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like that. But I put it all on separate, um, on separate groups, tracks. Groups, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. And so I just flick through yeah. like that and see what it feels about. Yeah. yeah. So you use um, a, a pattern, you know, so, so, so these are patterns in, in yeah. yeah, these are all patterns in like, machine tuning. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can imagine each channel is a group. Yeah. But how much better is that? Easier is that it's the logic in terms of putting down synths and bass lines. And it's the same thing. So if I get synth in there, I just go to um, in instruments, yeah? And then I go to say it's slightly different. In nine, you can you can you can find find sounds by by type as in machine. So bass, pianos, whatever. Yeah. In eight, you have to think about what it is. So it goes to the instrument first. Um, for example, I go instrument. Uh, yeah, it's not as fun in eight. 
So here, for example, I've got piano and keys. If I go to piano, for example, let's get this one, drag it in. Okay. Now, what's cool in eight, which complete copied, yeah. right, is this wow. So at the moment, I'm playing chords with my own hand, right? Yeah, that's just me. Yeah. Okay. But what I can also do, if I go to MIDI effects, go to chords, yeah. I can now. <laughs> Yeah, so you can decide to bring it, you know, so one note can trigger loads of things. Cool. So, so in terms of writing, it's 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 you know, it's it's it's, it's fine. You know, it's fine. Yeah, it's wicked. So, so again, why, why, um, and also when you use Ableton with Machine, what it's amazing for, like I use it, program beats a machine, drag and drop. Yeah, well that's why I do it. Drag and drop, drag and drop. So, it would, but workflow with Machine with Ableton is yeah, it's like, yeah, you should yeah, 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 then, um, what's it called? The launch pad things. They they're basically clips. Yes, yeah. So with launch pads, you're launching. So basically, with launch pads, you're launching clips. Yeah. On and on. Do you know what I mean? And maybe if it's got volume control, you need volume control. Right? So push is slightly different because push you can it's lighter control, but it's also like an instrument. Okay. You know? So essentially, so um, say for example, you wanted to then like say I had a, a you know. You know, so for example, oh, one other thing I need to show you is I'll, well, I'll show you, I'll show you one other situation of this, and then I'll show you how to basically create an arrangement. Okay, so let me just <clears throat> do a few things here. Um, I'm going to create a few more. I'm going to create a few more of these. And you've got this channel here called the master channel. And what the master channel is, is that you can trigger a series, a row of samples, right, just with this button here. Okay. So say for example, I wanted to play just take that away. That complete row, that could be we will not be held responsible. Any hearing in that row? We will not, 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 we will not. Yeah? So you imagine the whole row could be the intro. It's basically like cross cross grid, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. Launch bits that you want along the grid. Exactly, yes. This is like an advanced version of 
EJ and my kind of music 2000 on PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, sure. It is the best thing you make. You make your own clips. Yeah, you make, yeah, sure. Similar kind of thing, but obviously they're taking it to a yeah, no, no, But where this is amazing, because in this section here, so for example, I can put right in here. If I put a tempo in the um, in the master row, okay, it will jump to that tempo. Right, so notice if I press A, right, it's 100, like BPM, right? If I go here, right, give up, give So if you want to have tempo changes in your track, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Okay, and you'll remember it. So you say, for example, one could be like a segue, for example, you know, you can. So a lot of people, when you're when you're performing with Ableton, you can decide. Master, you can do master scene selections for big sections of a track, for example, where you're, you know, you've got loads going on in one row. It's just easier just to do the master yeah. bang, and then do all the intricate stuff yourself. Do you know what I mean? With the with, with the individual clips and mutings that one. But it's brilliant, right? But what's also good about this is that in conventional songwriting sense, you know, if this was like drums, bass, guitar, <coughs> or whatever, then each row, each row would be a part of the song. So yeah. one row will be the verse, one row will be the chorus, one row will be the bridge or whatever, and the, you know. So if you wanted to, right, let me just take this uh, tempo um, out. Oopsie. Right, so, um, so if I wanted to say, let me just stop everything. So to start, for example, arranging this track now. Say I, I, I was happy with the elements, I want to make a song out of it. Okay, I know what I want to do in terms of where, how and when I want to work with the clips. Okay, so let me make a tune out of it. Very simple. This is where this transport comes into it, right? So I finish record. Okay, I'll just start. Okay, right, let me start again. I could mess up the counter next. Start to record, yeah. I'll bring something else in. One, two, three, and awesome.
and everything. And that's it. Around the, uh, yeah, can move it around, yeah, so you can just capture the performance. Right, you want. Yeah, totally, move stuff around. So, so a really good way of using this is to work on the scenes, get an idea of the delays, effects, get, you know, a mix right, going on, and then just record it. Yeah, 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 totally. It's fun, man. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. 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 Audio, audio, audio automation. And what was that? So you recorded the whole thing as audio. Um, no, these are all. No, it's as Ableton with audio. It's not as. That's a good question. It says loops. It's not. It's not audio. So you can go in and change elements. Do you know what I mean? So it's not audio. It's it's. Um, right. Okay. It is audio, but it's it's it's, it's audio blocks. based on yeah. It's, it's blocks of audio. Oh, do you yeah. know what I mean, so it's not like recording audio. It's just recorded MIDI. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you go in and edit parts, you can reverse it even in here. You know, it's it's nuts. It's really really cool. Okay. Any questions on this? No. No. Anything you want me to anything you want me to show? I recorded it. You recorded yeah. everything. Yeah. Hi, mom. Yeah. Did you record it? Did you record it? Yeah. Yeah. I recorded it. Call me. Yeah, so it's cool. So in terms of, you know, if you're any of you thinking about having some kind of live performance where you're using, you know, um, audio with you know, you want some flexibility with your audio, you know, Ableton is definitely the way to go. You know? Well what I was thinking of doing is right, obviously I've got a lot of You're doing a sound picture thing, right? Yeah. Oh, the thing sounds no. picture, right? Well, I didn't know what I was going to do that for the life. It's going to do that at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. So, but I've always been made in corporate in it as yeah. well. But it's all going to be sort of live yeah. clip launching stuff. Yeah. What I was going to do with machine, but I could quite easily do it with that as well. And then use the machine as something separate. Yeah, use the machine as the percussion, percussion thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you can have like patterns in machine, you know, banks of stuff. So it's yeah. almost like you could think mm -hmm. about the machine as being like your percussion machine and using Ableton as the kind of clip launcher thing. I mean? Yeah, and also in Ableton you can clip, you can import, you can control video clips. Okay. You can drop, yeah, you can drop video clips in. And the thing about video clips is you're you, you're triggering. It listens to the audio. Do you know what I mean by that? Right. So and the picture just happens to go along with it. Right. Okay. So if you dropped a video, so for example, if you had an audio channel. Yeah, yeah. Dropped a video clip into it. The waveform that will come up would be the audio from the video. Right, okay, and able to listen to the audio for the editing. Yeah, there just happens to be a picture associated with it. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you if you're cutting up the audio, then you're cutting up the not yes, cut, you're, you're cutting, cutting up the, the picture. Video as well. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So it's cool. It's really, really. Whereas you can't, you can't time stretch the video. If you start time, if you try and time stretch or reverse the video, then you go. It's only for actual. Yeah, actual. Start, start, yeah, start yeah. The only yeah. thing that seems yeah. to be yeah. Yeah. And then you can off with Ableton is that like you can't do the arrangement. Yeah. Well, at least I don't know how to. Just, just because <clears throat> in reason I arrange everything there and then and then I add on top. So yeah. It's like, so I mean, you can do that in Ableton. You just start in the arrange page. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think page. it's. I think it was made more so for live events. Well, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, when Ableton for Ableton one didn't have the arrange page. Okay. Ableton one was just this page. Mm. See, that'd be hell for me right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's all you know, it's all relative. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. like if you if you if, if, you know, and again with all these things, is you know, we've got our own way of working. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And also, we're creatures of habit, so mm. and they're all tools. You don't want to think about you know, oh, how do I do it? This one is do it, right? So, mm. Yeah, I never, I ne I've got this on my make a light though. Yeah, but yeah. I never used I never used it. I'm gonna try because of the way it looks and because yeah. I'm, I'm like a logic here. Sure, that's but right. Help, this works very similar to machine. Yeah, yeah. So it's, and again with all these things you just need someone like me to show yeah. you get all the ninety percent, just you only need to know ten percent. Yeah, as long as you drop it. Well, this, 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 cool. Oh right, you know what I mean? And then once yeah. you know the ten percent, then the other yeah. ninety yeah. will come later. That's yeah. basically it. With all these things, you know? Yeah, you know, definitely. To be you know. to be fair though, um, now the way they're doing is that machine, logic, uh, reason, mm -hmm. and uh, able, and are pretty much similar. Like all these programs, yeah. Um, 
entertaining. Well, they all copy each other's features yeah. at the end of the day. You know, that's just, I mean, they're, we're all in, and, you know, and also si silently, you know, they won't, they won't condone people, cop you know, pirate, they won't condone it, but mm. the bottom line is they need people to copy it because they need people to use it. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, <laughs> but it's true. It's like, you know, it's like at some point you'd rather someone use it yeah. and then yeah. when you get some money, You'll buy it. What are you going to buy? A real thing? The real thing you know, or the thing you don't know? Well, the people that crack it, they're people getting used to it as well. Yeah, they're exactly. Really, they're investing in the yeah. software anyway. Yeah, totally. But yeah. I mean, not financially, but no. Yeah. But in terms of users, yeah, yeah. users. I, mean, I think it's better just to buy the the program, really, because when you get updates, you can't update a program. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's better to buy things. Download the updates. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, yeah, but it's, but it's long, isn't it? Sometimes like, they're able to they're able to crack Ableton's cracks more. The recent one is actually really good. Like, you know, historically they've been really hard. Yeah, they have. Really Really, really, Previously really to, 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 right. to nine, they've been horrible. But now, kind of like, it's a thing where, well, for example, uh, I, I bought Reason. Yeah. Because you can't crack it. Yeah, it's true. Right? You can. No, you can't, you man. You can, no, 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 you can crack it. Uh, they've got a PC, not a Mac. Not yeah. a Mac. No, 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 you can't. Not, man. Show, me a, show me a crack of seven and eight. Impossible. No, no, no you can't. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. no. I bought it. I bought yeah, Ryzen no, Trust five. me, I would know. I would on know. PCs, you can. PCs is a whole different matter. No, you, yes. can, you can crack number five on PC, but number six, they have that key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the SB as well. Seven and eight, you can't. Yeah, you can't. I mean... So I mean, in the day, you know, the policy is, is that if you can't afford it. Just use what you just use what you can. At the end of the day, you know, they don't care. They don't, they do care, obviously, but you know, it's about using software, getting used to it. And at some point, if you're, if you're making money from it, then invest. Yeah, in it. it's the proper thing yeah. to do. Yeah, but you're not going to add anything else. No, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, it raises a bit about software. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, go and buy it, folks. <laughs> <laughs>